The world-famous Forth Rail Bridge has carried rail transportation over the River Forth since 1890. But for over 800 years, ferry boats were the only means of transport between North and South Queensferry. Plans for a road bridge were considered as far back as the 18th century, but a ferry crossing was the only way, other than by rail, to traverse the River Forth up until 1964. After many years of deliberation, a site was finally chosen for the new Forth Road Bridge at Macintosh Rock, and in late 1958, the first pile was ceremoniously driven in by the then Secretary of State for Scotland, John Maclay. Giant plugs were dug deep into the rock on both sides of the river to anchor the ends of the suspension cables. Watertight coffer dams were placed out into the river estuary at the site of the two main towers and the foundations laid directly onto the riverbed a hundred feet into the bedrock. The approach towers were starting to rise at this stage. Using the assistance of deep sea divers, soft deposits were removed and the work inspected underwater. Work on the main tower foundations went ahead rapidly. gap between them at this time looked vast. It would take two years for the foundations to be completed. The route for the southern approach roads was earmarked and the last harvest from the land gathered.
Some houses in the path of the bridge had to be demolished and the land cleared. Construction of the four cable anchorages continued, two on either side of the river. These anchor points were to secure the ends of the main cables, each point capable of resisting a pull of about 14,000 tonnes. Early signs of the approach roads across the countryside were visible on a clear summer's day. Shale oil waste from Bings in West Lothian was tested for settlement and found to be suitable for the road's construction. The site of a well-known turkey farm and former Second World War airfield at Drem in East Lothian was used to sandblast and paint the massive steelwork for the main towers of the bridge. The steel section's journey to the site at South Queensferry was a relatively short one. Massive machines, able to scoop up 40 tonnes of rubble at one time, arrived on site to level off the approach roads. Forty-foot-long steel boxes forming the legs of the towers arrived from Drem. A 
were hoisted to the top of the towers using a crane which rose on a gantry as the height of the towers increased. Ingeniously, an elevator was constructed to carry the workmen to the top of the ever-rising towers. Fitting the cross braces on the main towers was certainly not a job for those suffering from vertigo. The southern approach road had to be raised to cross the Edinburgh to Aberdeen railway line near Dalmeny. Saddles to hold the main suspension cables are placed on top of the towers at a height of 512 feet above sea level. On the north side of the river, a huge rock excavating operation commences to remove some one million cubic yards of rock 
to make way for the northern approach roads. Workmen required wire catwalks to be strung between the two towers for the next stage of the construction process to commence. When the temporary catwalks were completed, senior steel foreman Jim Laverty, later to be awarded the British Empire Medal, became the first man to walk across the 3,300 foot main span of the Forth Road Bridge. Conventional suspension bridge construction, the suspended weight of the deck and its traffic is all carried by the substantial suspension cables strung between the two towers. The lengthy operation of spinning the main cables commenced in November 1961. A wheel carrying eight high-tension steel wire cables at one time ran from anchorage to anchorage until approximately 300 wire cables were formed into one single group. This labor-intensive process would be repeated thousands of times over the next 10 months. Each cable was color-coded to assist its identification in tensioning out over the fourth. These cable joins became stronger than the cable itself.
It would not be until August 1962 that these cables were ready to support the trusses and roadways suspended beneath. Traffic was diverted as construction of the Southern Approach Road continued. Footpath extensions were installed at this stage. Hangers were dropped from the main cables to carry the steelwork of the main decking. Work continued on the approach roads on the south side involving road diversions and the construction of a new bridge across the River Armand at Cramond. A house had to be demolished and a replacement built. The steelwork had to be raised to meet the hangers. During World War II, Prince Olaf of Norway was stationed in South Queensferry from where he commanded the Royal Norwegian Navy. Now King Olaf, he visited the construction site during his state visit in 1962. As the work progressed, the bridge began to assume a more positive form when the prefabricated steel decking was first laid and then bolted into sections.
a French system which enabled dry concrete to be rolled immediately was used in the roadway construction. The last of the 15,000 tons of 60-foot steel sections forming the roadway were lifted into position one by one. As the two ends of the new bridge drew closer together, the days of the faithful ferries were numbered. Suspended steelwork carrying the roadway met in the middle of the main span with a remarkable degree of accuracy and just a little celebration. Thousands of tons of pre-mixed concrete were laid on top of the steelwork to form the new road surface. Their purpose served, the temporary catwalks could now be dismantled and taken down. The massive amount of steelwork used in constructing the bridge required expansion joints to be fitted. The back-breaking work continued to lay the one and a half mile asphalt road surface and paint every piece of metalwork in sight.
The administration building was also nearing completion and heating cables were installed under the roadway by the toll booths to prevent the formation of ice. The men who built the bridge, who laid 150,000 cubic yards of concrete, who lifted 39,000 tons of steel, who hauled enough cable to stretch one and a quarter times round the Earth's equator, who labored through heavy winter winds and summer sunshine for over six years, and left a slender and gracious symbol of a new age, a testament to their skill and courage. On a misty day on September the 4th, 1964, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth took the last ferry crossing before performing the ceremony to declare the fourth road bridge officially open. That same day, traffic flowed across the newly opened bridge, the first of many millions of cars, buses and trucks crossing the long span between Scotland's capital city and the Kingdom of Fife. <laughs> 